Okay, next problem here. Um, it got, I, I adjusted it a little bit back when I wrote this test, so it's just the integral from negative infinity up to zero of x times e to the negative x dx. Um, this is one that mixes the two things that we've talked about so, so far on these sample problems. Um, it mixes uh, integration by parts with, um, with uh, improper integrals because it's got this negative infinity in it. So let's talk about how to do these. Um, first thing we're going to do is recognize we got x e to the x and do some um, uh, integration by parts, dir and int. Dir side, int side, so I get x, 1, stop at 0, e to the x, e to the x, e to the x. Diagonal arrows, plus, minus, that all, all products out, multiplies out to, to this right here. Um, and then I'm going to do as many steps as I can in 1. Um, the limit as b goes to, and really, um, honestly, uh, this letter here should be the same as this letter. So um, since this is the lower bound and I wrote a, it should probably say limit as a goes to negative infinity. Um, that's okay. I'm just going to roll with it of this thing. So um, I'm going to uh, talk about different piece of the, pieces of these differently. So let's talk about plugging in the zero first, okay? Um, when I plug in the zero, so look, this parenthesis is zero plugged in, and then this parenthesis here is, um, quote, the infinity plugged in. Um, so what do we get? We get, how do we get zero from the first term? Well, when I plug in zero to this term right here, this is zero times e to the zero. Well, you should know that e to the zero is one, um, but it doesn't matter if e to the zero is one because it's being multiplied by zero. That's where this one comes from. Minus, all right, so this term comes from 0 being plugged into this. Why do I get a negative 1? Well, we sort of just said that e to the 0 is 1. So this minus comes down, and this turns to a 1. Minus because we're evaluating an integral. Um, now, let me talk about this one first. This one comes from, quote, plugging in infinity to this thing e to the negative infinity is an exponential decay. That's going to go down to zero. Um, you could also think about it as one over e to the infinity if I pop that to be positive exponent. So I wind up getting zero because that decays away to zero. Then, where does this one come from? Well, b is going to negative infinity. I get an infinity, a negative infinity, times e to the negative infinity. Variety of ways to do this. I'm not going to do all of them, but I will talk about them. First off, you could use Hopital's rule. You could take the e to the negative infinity, pop it to the bottom, and you get a fraction. Okay, that's totally legitimate. You could get it. It's acceptable in calculus to say, oh, I got an x times the e to the negative x. The e to the is going to win. And that e to the uh, decays away fast enough that this thing doesn't matter, so we get zero. Um, anyway, all this stuff combined right here, a whole bunch of zeros and a negative one, just winds up giving me negative one. All right, so let's go over to this one right here. All right, so um, I got some big, crazy partial fractions here. Um, there are ways to do this that are long and complicated, or you can use cover-up. So in order to do cover-up on this thing, um, I initially, all these numbers that are written in the top of the fractions would not be written there. I would write a fraction bar, an x minus 1, fraction bar, this one, and a fraction bar, that one. Then what I do, to figure out what goes over the x minus 1, I just straight up cover this up with my finger, and then plug the value that makes this thing that I just covered up equal to 0. x equals 1 makes that 0, so I cover that up and plug it in. Notice on top, when I plug in 1, I get 2, because I get 1 plus 1, that's where this 2 comes from, and then I get 1 plus 2, which is the 3, and then I get 1 minus 2, which is the minus 1. Uh, that simplifies to a negative 2 thirds. Um, next one. And that's what I wind up getting down here. Uh, what are we going to do? We're going to cover up this term and plug in x equals negative 2. Gives me a negative 1 on the top. That's this. Negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. Um, negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4. That gives me a negative 1 twelfth, which is where this one comes from. Last one. Cover this up and plug in 2. I get 3 over this thing. Uh, when I plug in 2, it gives me 1.
when I plug in two, it gives me two. Sorry, wait. This gives me four. I don't know what's going on here. Maybe that's a four. Um, either way, so I plug in x equals two, and I get one times four. So this should be one times four. It's correct right here. I'm not sure what's going on right there. But, um, so I get three-fourths. Then I can integrate all these pieces individually. It's much easier than trying to integrate this and foiling and all kinds of mess and use subs that aren't going to work out. So we get negative two-thirds ln of this thing plus one-twelfth ln of this thing uh, plus three or minus one-twelfth plus three-fourths ln of this thing. Um, remember, if we get fractions, it's fine to leave it like this. If you get one that has whole numbers, I typically expect you to plug it and smash it. Let's go over to the next one. All right. So I do have to zoom out just a hair with this one. All right. So this one had some shorthands in it that, um, you know, are, are good enough here. But if you were to try to do this on the AP test, they wouldn't take everything. Um, I, I, for this C here, I, it stands for cosine. This S stands for sine. If you're on the AP test, you want to write that stuff all the way out. Um, uh, additionally, there's a variety of ways to teach this method. Um, it's a double escape method, a double arrow, then an escape. Um, and in this case, I'm using an I. And if I didn't use an I, um, when I originally taught this to you, that I stands for the thing that we're looking for, for integral, right? All right. So let's do what we can here to make sense of this. Um, all right. Cosine of 2x, e to the 3x. So... Some escape methods we can get out on the first uh, ramp, right? That would be this. Um, others we can't. This is an example of which for, of which one that of one for which we cannot get out in the first meth in the first ramp. You can get out on the second one. You kind of just have to know it. Then when we have an e to the x times a sine or a cosine, if there's numbers inside. We want to get out at the second exit. So, dir and int. I almost always, when I do these, put the e to the term on the int side because then I don't have to worry about negatives and I can just do derivatives and I'm less likely to make an error with my sine and cosine integration. Cosine 2x is on my der side, e to the 3x on my int side. Negative 2 sine of 2x, negative 4 cosine of 2x. That's some chain rule and some negatives from derivatives. Over here, uh, e to the 3x, 1 third, that's some, re some reverse chain rule, some u sub and then one ninth for the same reason. I go this product, this product, and then I escape with my integral. All right, so let me try to connect that to what we have over here. This integral is equal to bam, bam, minus integral bam. So this first bam gives me one third e to the three x times cosine two x. That's this, one third c is representative of all of that, okay? Then I get this product. 2 sine 2x with a negative, and that negative as well, times this. So it's positive 2 ninths sine of 2x times e to the 3x. So this super shorthand, which again is not acceptable on the AP test, is just a 2 ninths s for 2 ninths the sine term. And then 4 ninths i. What I want you to see is I do get, um, well, minus 4 ninths i. So the minus comes from here. The i comes from integrating. Well, let me talk about the 4 ninths first. The minus 4 comes from here. The 1 ninth comes from this. So that gives me 4 times 1 ninth, which is minus 4 ninths. What is i? Well, look, when we escape, we go back and we do our integral. I get an e to the 3x times the cosine of 2x. That's familiar. That's this right here. So what I do is I write minus 4 ninths i because i is the original integral I'm looking for. What I can do is add that to both. Or uh, Sorry, what I did here in this particular problem was I said, e, I don't like fractions. So what do we do? We multiply by 9 everywhere. Um, that's kind of always a really good technique, just to multiply to get rid of fractions. That gives me a 9 here. Cancels with this, gives me a 3. Cancels with this, gives me a 2, and leaves me with a minus 4 here. Then I can add 4i to both sides. We get 13. That adds with the 9. Equals this. And then I divide by 13. So what do I get? 3 times the cosine 1 which was cosine 2x times e to the 3x, plus 2 times the sine 1, which was, the sine 1 was sine of 2x times e to the 3x. Sorry, I had an interruption there. I think I was saying that uh, 
that this two s was um, uh, the s was the sine of two x times the e to the three x, right? So my last line, and again, this is not acceptable on the AP test. You'd have to show more detail, but I'm shorthanding it here because it was easy. But we divide by 13, right? So I get 13 over 3c, so 3e to the x cosine 2x, uh, plus 2 times e to the 3x times sine. There should be a 2x in there somewhere, or right after that sign. But that's that final answer, um, and I hope that makes sense. Let's go on to the next problem. All right, so the next two here are limit ones, and they're highlighted yellow, so I did them on a different sheet. So I got this limit as x goes to 0 of 3x to the x, and then this limit as x goes to infinity of 5x times sine of 8 over x. Uh, we're using Hopi towels in both these, but we have to manipulate them a little bit before we can hop them. So let me go down. All right, 2a here. So um, basically in this one, I take advantage of the plug rule to be able to create something that's a fraction um, that is hoppable, and then I do a bunch of simplification and um, reverse the ln stuff that I did. So here's my limit. x goes to 0 of this to 3x to the x. That goes to 0 to the 0. I need to manipulate it. Uh, first thing I do is I let y equal that exact same thing. Then I can take the ln of both sides, um, uh, and then I can do a bunch of work on this. The key here is that once I know what y is, I know what my limit is. So ln of this. I can move the ln inside of the limit, and that gives me this right here. Um, and then what I can do, once I have the ln of 3x to the x, uh, I can take this x and move it out front because that's a log rule. I call it the plug rule because it makes sense because um, it's p log x equals log of x to the p. Anyway, um, we got the limit as x goes to 0 from the right here. Um, the x itself definitely goes to 0. And then I get ln of 3 times 0. We can't do that, but we do know that the ln of 3 times 0 goes as the x goes to 0, the ln goes to negative infinity. So that's why I have this little negative 0 times negative infinity, just like I had the 0 to the 0. It's that indeterminate form from BC. So what do I do? I take this, and I pop it to the bottom. I do a 1 over, 1 over. It's sort of like doing a reverse copy dot flip. If I were to copy dot flip this line right here, I would be returned this line up here. So they're equivalent. Now, boom, finally, the ln, as we plug in that 0, goes to negative infinity, and 1 over x, as we go to 0 from the right, also goes to infinity. That's infinity over infinity, or the negative version of that. That means I can hop it. So I hop it, I get this. The 3 comes out as a chain rule. Um, that's something that people usually get. And then the derivative of ln of is 1 over of. So I get 1 over the 3x. Sometimes people forget this 3 when they're doing it right here, um, the one in the bottom of that fraction. And then this one gets a little power rule, negative 1 over x squared. That gives me the limit as x goes to 0 of the uh, 3's cancel, 1 over x. And then I just left this as is. From there, I go back to copy dot flip, and I get this right here. And then that simplifies by some division or simplification, however you want to think about it, to negative x. And the limit as x goes to 0 of negative x is just 0. So what you have to do here is backtrack all the way to where we started. What was this? Oh, this was ln of y, right? So remember what I said earlier. If we know what y is, we know what the limit is. So after I get the 0, I can go back to this and say, well, I know then that ln of y is equal to 0. How do I find y? I do e to the, because it's the opposite of ln, and I get y equals e to the 0. We know that e to the 0 is 1, so this original limit here is 1. Uh, I'll do the next two problems in the next video, and uh, I think they'll go quick and you'll enjoy them. Peace, y'all. Bye.